almost every single colorist you'll see edits in DaVinci Intermediate or DaVinci Wide Gamut and not in Rec. 709. And you may know that DaVinci Intermediate has like 30 plus stops of dynamic range and that sounds great. But what is actually going on? So in this video, I'm going to show you on this grayscale what the physical differences are in editing between editing in Rec. 709 and DaVinci Wide Gamut. So let me show you, first of all, if you're wondering how I got the grayscale, you go to effects, generators, and you can just drag it into your timeline and you have to create a new compound clip. So if you right click on the clip, create a new compound clip, then you can pull it into the color tab. So let's see, what have we got going on here? We've got two CSTs, one that's sending us into DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and the input color space is just Rec. 709. That's set by my project settings. The output device transform, the second CST is just taking us from wide gamut, DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate back to Rec. 709. So let me disable these two nodes and we can see that we've done our transforms properly because our image isn't changing. Okay. So let's see what happens. Let's start with the primaries. So if I bring our lift down bring the gain up. This is this might be a way that you add contrast, right? And you can see what's happening. We're crushing all of our black points and we've just blown all the highlights out immediately. Now, what will happen if I activate these two nodes? You can see, I mean, you can see in the image, first of all, massive, massive difference. This roll off is so much smoother. And obviously it's clear by the curve that we're not crushing any of these black points and we're not blowing out any of these highlights. If I show you specifically what the gain and lift do, it's creating this really, really, really beautiful curve, which otherwise in Rec. 709 just wouldn't, wouldn't be happening, right? You can see it's just, it's not smooth at all. Um, so that's one massive, massive difference. Now let's take a look at, also if you're wondering what the what offset does, you can see here, it's basically just shifting the entire image up and down. So here it's affecting the shadows as much as it is the highlights, whereas gain is going to be affecting your highlights more, right? Lift is affecting your shadows more. And the gamma actually in your primaries is going to give you a much smoother change in lighting in so like overall exposure. Um, speaking of overall exposure, let's take a look at the global exposure wheel in our HDR in our HDR palette. So you can see this is pretty similar to gain, right? It's pretty similar to the gain. And if I activate these two, you can see very similar effect that we're keeping this really smooth S curve. And this is my go-to tool to dial in specific exposure. And I like to affect shadows, dark and light. I like to basically just dial in the exposure using the HDR wheels for this reason, so let me show you why. So if we go back to Rec. 709 and I take my shadows and I start moving them around, you can see what's going on, right? So anything below this point, so what's that, like 60, 70% of, of the full brightness, anything below that is what we're affecting. But can you see here, we've got this straight line, it's a curve and then a straight line and then a curve, and it's just not, it's just not clean at all. Right, and you can see if I push it all the way to each side, okay, just look at what it's doing. And now I'm going to go into DaVinci Wide Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate, and you can see the latitude that we've gained. Like, it's right. Can you see how in Rec. 709 we can't pull our shadows up further than here, whereas in DaVinci Wide Gamma we can, okay? So and we're not getting any of these weird sort of straight line thing. Like this is a smooth, nice, smooth curve, right? Basically, the bottom line of this entire video is that editing in DaVinci Wide Gamma is just going to give you much smoother and much more consistent results. That's that's the bottom line. The one other thing that I was going to share is the fact that when you're trying to add color, in Rec. 709, you're not going to have anywhere near as much latitude. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to pull my mid-tone all the way up. So this is as much red as we can add into the mid-tones. This is literally, I can't go any higher, okay? Now look what happens when I activate these two nodes. Oh my god. Like, it's not even, 
it's not even funny what the difference is, right? So, in Da Vinci Wide Gambit, we can add so much more, and there's so much more latitude for changing things around. If I deactivate these two, look at the difference. Like, it's just we can't we can't alter our image as much. So, Da Vinci Wide Gambit, because of its massive breadth, right? It just allows you to add so much more and it allows you to sort of explore parts of literally like parts of the color science that just don't exist in Rex 709 that's the bottom line um but you can see from like the the smoothness of of your contrast and changing lift gamma gain and whatnot the massive difference that it makes to edit in DaVinci Wide Gamma so yeah I hope that looking at the grayscale and you know seeing physically what it does has helped you guys understand it you know i encourage you guys to also have a play around with the grayscale um just so you can understand what's going on with with all of your different wheels and you know you can go into your curves and see 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 what it's doing like physically so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you in the next one